Hey everybody, how you doing? Last Outrider here with part 10 of Who Are the Grey Knights. This is important. This is a big one, and long one probably. Uh, we're finally going to go more into how the Grey Knights actually fight. Those warp-spawned, never-born little bastards. Okay? So... Before, they were talking about the true names. And we're going to get back to that because that's really, 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 really important. And I'm going to finally be able to tell you what I think is going to happen in the end of the 40K universe. <clears throat> I really think all, all, the little, all the little parts are right there. That may, maybe they have to rewrite it if I reveal it to you. But here we go. We left off where it said that the scribes, no scribe can ever be trusted with more than a fragment of a demon's true name, lest he become corrupted by the raw power it contains and threaten the very chapter he seeks to serve. Thus, each scintilla of lore is inscribed onto a blessed scroll in sigils of the scribe's own blood. Mere ink cannot contain such knowledge. Each is then presented for collation and interpretation by one of the chapter's senior librarians and, in turn, bound into one of the blessed grimoires within the Sanctum Sanctorum. Well, I can safely say, if that's the job of the senior librarians, I think it was in part eight, you know what the job of the junior librarians are. It's the, it's the checking the, the library card thing. In the corridor to the Sancto Sanctorum, I'm guessing. For these pieces of lore, the Grey Knights bestow names to their new recruits. Each one is carefully chosen. The title is... Sorry, I'm going to start that again. From these pieces of lore, Grey Knights bestow names to their new recruits. Each one a carefully chosen title fashioned into a weapon. So let's translate that. The Grey Knights' names are formed from the same language that demon names come from. The, because remember, each scribe is just holding a syllable of it. They can just take those syllables and, well, you put enough syllables together, you get a word. Put enough words together, you get a title for a Grey Knight. Because that's what it said. It said title, carefully chosen title. Fashioned into a weapon. So, uh, they're not... It's not going to be a name. Like uh, uh, a surname and, and, a, and a first name like we would know. It's going to be some form of title. He's the, you know, divine smiter of all things that go meep. Spoken in demon tongue would be the name of a great knight. And his very action of saying his name, therefore already screws up a demon. He doesn't even have to know the demon's name. His name itself is a weapon. Just as every true name holds power over the demon who bears it, so too do the true names of men have resonance within the war. For this reason... When a Grey Knight is recruited, his name is one of the first things scrubbed from his mind. So now you have the reason as to why Grey Knights have their entire past wiped from them. It's in many ways to protect them. So that's why they're saying that this other thing that they get is a title. Because essentially you already have, the Grey Knight already has his true name from, from whatever his life was before. They can't change that. They can hide it. What's the best way to hide it? Forget it. <clears throat> if nobody knows it, nobody can find it, including the person who the name belongs to. A Grey Knight doesn't know his own name, not for secrecy of the Imperium, but because if he knew his own name, 
then some psychic manipulation would be able to pluck that information from his thoughts and use it against him. Of course, if he doesn't know his own name, or know where he was born, or know anything about his past, it would be very difficult for any of the Chaos followers to find out a Grey Knight's true name because that knowledge has literally been erased from existence. Except, apparently, <clears throat> in a little-known book written by Aaron Dembski Barden called The Emperor's Gift, this information is now entirely actually is stored somewhere where even a junior inquisitor is able to go in and pull it all up and then inform it to the Grey Knight. Say, hey, guy, let me help you out. Let me tell you about your past. It's like, oh, somebody shut this girl up, please. Yes, she was from Finris, too. Maybe it's one of those, you know, Fenrisian sense of humor things that I don't get when I read Space Wolf novels. <clears throat> so, so, so she goes, and apparently it is all kept. And, and her story was that it's not that the past of a Grey Knight is secret. It's just that nobody cares. Nobody outside of the chapter is what she's talking about. And she makes the point of is... Let's say I gave you all of the information on the background and the selection process and the name and blah, blah, blah of a Grey Knight. What would you do with it? It, it holds no leverage over a Grey Knight. It holds no influence over the Imperium. I mean, you can, you can call it secret, but really, it's just raw data that nobody would care about because it's not useful to anyone, in her convoluted opinion. Now, what they're explaining here is it actually is useful to somebody. It could be useful to Chaos to track down the original histories of the Grey Knights, to find where they came from, and possibly then find their true name. And that would obviously be very dangerous for a Grey Knight. So... That's why I've said I'm, I, I think I am going to break this video up because it's going to be a lot more talking than reading. Think about that. We're going to go on with Grey Knight's true names because there's more, several more pages about it even in the book. And it's pretty complicated. And in the end, I'm going to promise you, by the time we finish this series, I will tell you exactly in detail how I think the Emperor is going to handle the whole end of the 40k universe. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hmm.